Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you my unsmooth out of bulk trees uh, that just seems to exist no matter what I seem to do and how we can actually take care of it now that I figured out what's going on. Uh, hopefully, if any of you guys are out there working on fingers and toes and you run into the same problem, this helps you guys out. Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you my unsmooth out of bulk trees uh, that just seems to exist no matter what I seem to do and how we can actually take care of it now that I figured out what's going on. Uh, hopefully if any of you guys are out there working on fingers and toes and you run into the same problem this helps you guys out. So just kind of demo right here. I can inflate it, I can smooth it out, I can I don't know apply any of these pinch magnify all day and Pretty much no matter what happens, it's not going away. So there's a really good reason for this and it's really not obvious. And to show you, I'm going to go into object mode and hit shift F in order to do fly mode so that we can completely freely move around. And I'm going to look over there and basically we've got like something like a tumor here where um, in the sculpt, the mesh should just be on the outside, but a couple vertices managed to poke inside. I'm guessing with the crease tool and then later on the inflate tool uh, must have made it blown out of proportion. So we have this issue here and that's what's, uh, what is intersecting with the outside on both the top and the bottom, I believe. You can kind of see the creases there. And so we want to remove that. So first off, in sculpt mode, I'm going to enable Din Topo on any brush and I'm going to symmetrize the X to the other side of the X axis. Um, and that's just so that we're working with the exact same thing on both sides. Then I believe we're going to go into edit mode and try to cut that piece out manually rather than using the sculpting tools. So in edit mode, because this mesh has an insane amount of faces, it's going to slow down the computer if we're trying to show the whole thing in edit mode. Um, so I'm going to select the part we're actually working with and then control I to invert it. And I'm going to hide that piece with uh, shift H, alt H. So because sculpt mode creates an insane amount of faces in your mesh, if you use Dentopo in order to get more accurate sculpts, um, in edit mode, it's going to slow down the computer for basically maintaining the entire mesh all at once. So I'm going to select the part we don't want to remove and uh, I'm making sure that we can select through all the vertices here um, by having that select fa uh, front facing vertices mode turned off. I'm going to select what we actually want to work with. I'm going to control I to invert that. And then I'm going to hit H to hide basically everything else. And now we can even kind of just look inside really easily. Uh, the part that we wanted to cut out should still be there. Okay, and now I'm going to re-enable limit selection to visible so that we're only looking at the outside vertices because all of those want to be left alone. So let's just go ahead and box select this and then hide it. And now we can see the inside part that's causing us issues. Suppose I would do that with the bottom part of the mesh too. Hide that. Okay, didn't quite get it the first time, so I'm actually going to select all four sides before I hide this time. So let's get the front and back facing portions. And the more accurately we select here, the easier it's going to be to kind of isolate the part that we need to remove. I'll even do it from the front here. And one more time. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. So let's give that a shot with H. Okay. So let's see what happens if we do the lazy, lazy method here. It'll probably create some gaps. Let's just see if we delete all those vertices there and then we rehide it or reshow everything. Okay, that actually 
wasn't too bad. We created gaps, obviously, um, because when you sculpt, it is creating one solid mesh. It's just that my mesh got poked inside really far. Just to make sure I don't have any floating vertices right now, I'm going to select one point on the main mesh, hit L to select everything. And I'm going to hide it and we're going to see what's left. Okay, so we have a bunch here. I want to remove basically all of that. Because we should not be having that. And we can control H here. So with the select everything, or the, the select front facing portions mode off so that we can select everything again, I'm just going to hide the rest of the mesh. Uh, so control I and then H to hide that. And now wherever there's a gap here, we just need to fill those in. So in order to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to enable Dentopo on the smooth brush and I'm going to increase the, deals, uh, the detail size to be a lot higher uh, so that we can reduce some of the triangles over here. All right, guys, so the actual solution I came up with for fixing the problem is not exactly elegant, but as far as I know, there's not a better way to do it at the moment. So the idea here is that you have these nasty looking gaps in your mesh and you need to reconnect everything in the topology but it's not so easy where you have uh, edge loops that you can just do something like a grid fill on you actually need to manually go in here and take care of the issues so to make it manageable uh, because remember dentopo mode by default is going to make the mesh more complicated but that also makes it harder to work on uh, so in order to make this a manageable problem, I need to use a combination of the smoothing tool, which you can always access just by holding shift on any tool, and the flattening brush um, at a very high dentopo size. Uh, size. So what the flattening brush will do is basically flatten everything out, remove a lot of the detail, and the smoothing brush will help make it uh, a lot more uniform, um, kind of less complex, minimize the effects of these I guess you would call them pointy triangles that are kind of popping out. And what we definitely want to make sure is that all of these triangles, we don't end up with any hidden ones that we can't see under the mesh again, because that was what caused the issue to begin with. So I'm going to kind of go here in Dentopo mode, uh, setting the detail size to 40, and try to flatten all of this out and remove pretty much as much detail as we can can always zoom further out um, in order to make the triangles even larger, which makes it easier on us in the long run. Um, yes, this is going to kind of destroy a lot of the detail in your mesh, um, but I guess that's the nature of making a mistake earlier on that you have to fix later. Sometimes it really messes with, uh, with what you've got going on. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can see how Dentopo plus detail size 40 uh, is really taking those small triangles and making them really big again. And we can also go on the inside mesh to kind of make sure nothing's overlapping. So I'm going to smooth this out a bit and flatten it. Just make sure that everything is independent, nothing's overlapping, and not really worrying so much about the overall size and shape of it. Just trying to make it easy to reconnect things and then we'll worry about fixing the shape later. Oh, and uh, of course you can kind of see I was practicing a little bit earlier. This is after it's all been sealed up. There's still some floating vertices in there which I'll take care of by basically selecting the big mesh, hiding that, and then selecting all the remaining vertices. Um, but yeah, so far that's worked out okay. It's another really solid mesh, no more giant blob issue in there. And that's just the same idea for what I've got to go ahead and do over here. Being careful to make sure that there's no uh, extra gaps in the mesh or anything. Remember, like, uh, this isn't actually a hole here, I just hid the rest of the human. Okay, so let's just see if I can make it just a little bit more simplified to save some time here. And uh, now I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode where we're going to have to basically select the vertices and you can you can see that there are some kind of floating around there try to delete the ones that are definitely connected by an edge 
Uh, and I'm not going to worry so much about the ones that are just floating in space, because those are really easy to get rid of later. But we don't want there to be any more of these connected ones that exist after this is done. And it's okay if they're connected and floating in space, just none that are randomly connected to the main mesh. Okay, and uh, since we've made the triangles uh, in Dentopo mode pretty big, it's actually not that bad to go ahead and fill some of these meshes up later. Not really worrying about the topology or making sure it's triangular or anything right now. We can even simplify that more than it currently is. Ah, make sure you're in Dentopo mode or it won't simplify it. Okay, so let's just remove a lot of the detail there. Just make it much easier to actually work with what we've got here. Okay, maybe a little bit of smoothing and let's look up. Okay, up there it looks fine. And that's basically the process. So I'll keep doing this for a little while. Just to give you guys a better idea of what I'm doing here. And Yes, it's a pretty painful process, but once again, I don't really see a much better way to do it at the moment. Um, as some Google searching the internet kind of revealed, there's no magical solution here. The only thing you can do is make it a little bit easier on yourself by smoothing out or flattening out a lot of those very complicated sculpt uh, triangles. The less triangles, the easier it is to edit. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pretty much made sure that in edit mode, I don't see any more gaps in the issue. It was really just fixing those two creases that really went inside. Quite nasty. Um, but hopefully you can see on screen that there are still a lot of these floating vertices around. So what I'm going to do is do an L select of everything on the solid mesh, hide it, and we're going to select all of those extra vertices, delete them. And yeah, pretty much easy to take care of that. Uh, just be careful with the ones that are actually attached to the main mesh because those will hide when you do the L select too. And I'm going to do a control H to go ahead and remove everything um, or re show everything. And yes, it's going pretty slow in edit mode simply because that is a lot of stuff to show. You can see pretty heavy on the memory use. And uh, looking inside of the mesh, I'm not seeing any gaps anymore. So we'll check the outside one more time. Um, and it seems to be good. So if you get that issue again, uh, just be sure to check the inside of your mesh and you might have to t you know, take care of that, smooth it out, um, delete some of the vertices, and then get back to working on the actual detail of the mesh. But now that we've actually gone ahead and do th done that, we can, well, in Dentopo possibly with a much lower detail size, we can actually get back to doing the modeling or the sculpting, which is kind of what we had in mind to begin with. So I'm not really going to do that too much now, but uh, yeah, that should be able to help fix your issues with the sculpt. Um, oh, and when you do do it on one side, make sure you symmetrize it to, uh, to the other side. This foot should still have the same issues. Uh, yeah, it does. Oh, it symmetrize, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, so let's see, uh, positive. Okay, I think it's supposed to be negative to positive here. Uh, so let's do that, and if not, we'll just redo it. And this should just take everything in the right foot and make it identical to the left foot. Okay, and that was wrong. I actually needed positive to negative there. So, um, positive, positive x to negative x. Symmetrize both sides of the model. And after a second here, it should be good to go. Okay, so we can check that foot too, just to be sure that it's totally fine. Although it should be. And let's try to get in there. So, okay, it's identical to the left side foot. And we have essentially fixed our mesh. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching this tutorial on uh, well, me fixing my stuff to show you how to fix your stuff. And I will see you guys in my future Blender content.